In this video, I'm going to be discussing how to graph quadratic equations, what do their graphs look like, and some of their general characteristics. So first of all, I'm going to start by looking at basketball. Because a lot of people know basketball and play basketball. And so the question I want to start with is what shape do basketballs make while they're in flight? Well, here I have a picture of someone playing basketball. This comes from Dan Meyer's website. And so if we look at the shape that the ball is making, I can kind of sketch it out here. You can see it kind of makes a U shape. Now, eventually, I know this is going to have to come down at some point. You know, that whole gravity thing, it's kind of important. So that shape, this curve, is really important. And the question becomes, how can I model that with mathematics? Now, before I get into that, I need to talk about something called a quadratic function. Uh, we just finished our unit on factoring. In particular, we were factoring quadratic equations. And so a quadratic function is a function that can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, these values are very important, this a, b, and c. They're all very important. We're going to be using them throughout the entire unit related to quadratics. Now remember, quadratic simply means that the highest exponent is 2. That is why this is called a quadratic function. Now a, the number out front, cannot be 0. Because if it were 0, then this whole x squared would be gone, and therefore we wouldn't have a quadratic. Now, standard form of a quadratic is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, again, this whole a, b, and c are all very important. Now, I just talked about basketball, and there's a reason for it. Because the question that comes up is, what shape do quadratics make? So, let's take a look at an example before I get into it too much. How about, um, let's graph y equals negative... 2x squared plus 3x plus 2. So to get a general feel of this, I'm going to graph this using Desmos. Now, we're going to do some more graphing by hand. So if you're following on the video, uh, you don't need Desmos. Just watch what I do. So I'm going to graph y equals negative 2x squared plus 3x plus 2. And I can see here that I have this U shape. It looks very similar to the shape of my basketball flying through the air, where it would start, and then gravity would come in and pull it back down. This shape is what we're going to be looking at. And so I wanted to find what is that shape. That shape is called a parabola. A parabola. So a graph of a quadratic function, meaning, again, quadratic, that it is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, really, we can modify this form, but the big idea is that if it has this squared, it's going to be a parabola. So I've got some examples here of different parabolas. I could have a half pipe that could work as a parabola, or I have a person throwing a baseball. Any type of projectile motion, we can use parabolas to represent, because you know that whole gravity thing makes our object come back to the ground. So for parabolas, we're going to be looking at their different characteristics and some important features. The first important feature is this thing called the vertex. The vertex is the highest or lowest point on a parabola. Now here I have some diagrams of parabolas, and you can see my sources listed down here. So in these two pictures, I have a vertex. In this case, my vertex is here. This one's not labeled, but I see my vertex is right there. It's either the highest or the lowest point on the parabola. Now, we can use the vertex to do a number of different things, but for right now, we're just going to look at some characteristics. Now, for this particular parabola, I want to determine whether it is a maximum or a minimum. Now, just thinking again about maximum and minimum, maximum means it's the highest point, and minimum means that it's the lowest point. So if I'm looking at this parabola, this vertex right here is the minimum. 
This is the minimum because it is the lowest part of my parabola. Now conversely, when I'm looking at this one, I see that my vertex is at the top of my shape. Therefore, it is a maximum. Now from these two examples here, my minimum and my maximum, there's something hopefully that we notice. Now, if I'm looking at this parabola, if I'm looking at how it's opening, and by that I mean whether it's opening up or down. Since this parabola is opening up, I have a minimum. That means my vertex is going to be at the bottom. Now, this feature is going to work for every parabola. So this is something I want you to include in your notes. So if the graph opens up, meaning the parabola opens towards the top, that means the vertex is the minimum. And conversely, if the parabola opens down, it means the vertex is the maximum. This is just a very nice way to help determine whether my vertex is a maximum or minimum without uh, too much effort. Now another nice feature of parabolas is that they have what is called an axis of symmetry or sometimes it might be called the line of symmetry. Now if you ever see AOS like this, I'm referring to the axis of symmetry. Now the axis of symmetry is a line that divides the parabola into two matching pieces. <clears throat> so uh, if you remember maybe back in elementary school, you would have a picture like this. You'd have a star. And they would say, cut it so that it's symmetrical. This simply means draw a line so that if you fold the star on top of itself, this side would equal that side. The same thing is true for parabolas. We can cut them down the middle, right through the vertex, and fold it on top of itself. That means it's symmetrical. And so one really important thing to know is that the axis symmetry goes through the vertex. It will always go through the vertex no matter what because the vertex is right in the middle. Now to find the equation of the axis of symmetry, here's what you do. The equation of the axis of symmetry is x equals the x coordinate of the vertex. Now if you remember back to graphing, whenever I have an x equals, this is a vertical line. So in our cases, we're going to look at parabolas that open up or down. So that means our equation for the axis symmetry is going to be vertical lines. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. What we're going to do is we're going to find the coordinates of the vertex. We're going to write the equation in the axis symmetry and determine if the vertex is a maximum or minimum. So let's start with the graph on the left. So first of all, when I'm looking at the vertex, I see it's right here. This is the point 0, 2. I'm not going over, I'm just going up 1, 2. Therefore, my axis of symmetry is the vertical line x equals the x coordinate, 0. So if I wanted, I could draw a vertical line, the vertical line x equals 0, and it will divide the parabola in half. Next, I have to determine if this is a maximum or a minimum. Since my parabola is opening down and my vertex is the highest point, this is a maximum. Now let's look at the other example. So again, I'm going to look for my vertex and I can see here that the lowest point is right there. So my vertex is the point negative 1, negative 2. I go left 1, down 2. That's my point. Therefore, my axis of symmetry is the vertical line x equals negative 1. So like before, I could drop a vertical line through it and it would cut it in half. So that is my axis symmetry. Now looking at this parabola, the vertex is at the very bottom meaning that this is a minimum.
now that we've done some analysis of parabolas, looking at the vertex, the axis, symmetry, minimum, maximum, what we're going to do is we are going to graph it by hand. We can use Desmos, but it's something I am going to expect you to do is to graph it by hand. So let's go through the steps. Here's how you do it. The first thing you always do is you're going to find the vertex and the axis of symmetry. Now for today, all of our parabolas are going to be of this form. y equals ax squared plus 0x plus c, meaning that there is no middle term. We're going to be missing that. When that is the case, when there is no term in the middle, our vertex has the x-coordinate of 0. So this is how we're going to find our vertex and how we find our axis symmetry. Now once you find the vertex and axis symmetry, you're going to make a table of values. So we're going to pick two x's that are close to the vertex, and we're going to graph them. Lastly, we're going to use the fact that a parabola is symmetrical to reflect points across the axis, the axis symmetry, and then connect them. So let's jump into some examples. So we're going to graph the parabola y equals 1 half x squared. So following my steps, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the vertex. Now we know that our x coordinate is 0 because there is no x term. There is no like 2x, there is no 3x, there's none of that. Since that's the case, we just use x as 0. Now to find my y coordinate, we're going to do like we did previously in solving systems. I'm going to take this 0, I'm going to plug it in, plug it into x. Now like before, you got to be like Oprah, give everyone parentheses, make sure you put the squared on the outside. So when I evaluate this, 1 half times 0 squared, I get a value of 0. So my vertex is 0, 0, right there. Next, I need to find my axis of symmetry, axis of symmetry, and I already know that. I know it is x equals 0. That comes from right here. So I'm going to sketch my axis symmetry. I'm going to draw a nice vertical line that goes directly through the vertex, like so. So that's step one. Step two, I'm going to create an xy table. X, Y. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick two numbers that are close to zero. And I'm going to pick the numbers one and two. One and two. Because if I look over here, x is one is here, x is two is over here. Now I want to pick numbers that are on the same side of the axis. Like I wouldn't want to pick one and negative one. Because what's going to happen in a minute is I'm going to do some reflection, and these points would reflect on top of each other. We'll talk more about that in a minute. <clears throat> so let me scoot this over just a bit. So what we're going to do is find the y coordinates to go with these x's. So like before, I'm going to replace the x value. I'm going to replace this x. Oops, make sure you see it. Replace that with 1. So I do 1 half, and then in parentheses, 1 squared. And so I know 1 squared is 1. So 1 times 1 half is 1 half. OK, now let's try uh, 2. So I do 2, so it will be 2 squared. So I know that 2 squared is 4. So 4 times 1 half is 2. And you could be wondering, what are these things for? I've got 1, 1 half, 2, and 2. Well, what these are, are these are points. So I know that the point 1, 1 half, 1, 1 half right there, is on my parabola. So I plugged in 1, and that's what I got for the y. In the same way, the point 2, 2 is also on the line, so on the parabola, over 2, up 2. So I've got these two points, and I plotted them. Now step three is I'm going to reflect these points across my axis symmetry. Now here's how you do it. What you're going to do is you're going to count 
how far away am I from the axis? So for this point right here, I am one away from the axis. So that means on the other side, I'm going to go one away on the axis. Same for this point. Since I am one, two away from the axis, I go one, two on the other side. Now, if you did this correctly, you'll notice that these make a parabola. These make the U shape. Now, try your best. Uh, we'll see how well this, can, this is going to go for me. I'm going to go down. There we go. And you can see my lovely parabola there. Connect them as best you can. We don't make V shapes. Parabolas are used. So try and make it curved at the vertex. So let's take a look at one more example. So here I have y equals negative x squared plus 2. So what I'm going to do, like before, is I'm going to start by finding my vertex. Now my vertex, since I have no b term, there is no term in the middle, it's going to be 0 something, and i got to figure out what that something is. So to do that, I'm going to plug in 0 for x. Now notice the negative stays on the outside, and the 0 just replaces the x with parentheses, plus 2. Now I'm going to evaluate this. So 0 squared, and then make it negative. Well, that's not going to change anything. It's still 0 plus 2. And while well, 0 plus 2 is 2. So my vertex is the point 0, 2. Next, I need to find my axis of symmetry which, like in the problem before, is x equals 0. It comes from that right there. It'll change eventually, but not today. At least it won't be 0 later. So I draw my axis of symmetry, and I'm good to go. Next, I'm going to make a table of values, an xy table, and I'm going to pick two numbers that are close to 0. So again, I'm going to pick the numbers 1 and 2. 1 and 2. They're both on the same side. x is 1, x is 2 are on the same side of the axis symmetry. So I'm going to choose those. So like up here, I'm going to replace x with 1 and evaluate. So this is negative 1 plus 2, which is 1. So that means the point 1, 1, 1, 1, is on the parabola. Same thing with 2. I plug in 2. So 2 squared plus 2. So let's see. Uh, 2 squared, that'll be 4. So that's negative 4 plus 2. So that would be negative 2. So that means the point 2, negative 2, 2, negative 2 are on my parabola. Now step three, I'm going to reflect these values across my axis of symmetry. So since this is one away from the axis, I do one away on the other side. This is two away, so I do it two away on the other side. And notice I made my nice parabola and connect it as best you can. A little bit off, but get the idea. And there's our parabola. Now obviously computers can do this a little bit smoother. But you need the general idea of how it works. So that is a basic introduction of how to graph parabolas to look at their vertex and the axis of symmetry.